morning, y'all. Um, it's four in the morning. I'm a little sorry for the attire. It's a little chilly here in Dallas. Um, start with this. This was oh, several years ago. This vision started, and it's just you know it's been part of different messages, but I've never really brought this forth. But this is this is where I'm going to go. It's seemingly natural, but if you really listen to it. And I'll get into the spiritual part, but there's a lot of depth in it. I was in the spirit praying, and the Lord took me above an aircraft carrier. Okay? That kind of signal, we think, you know, in the world, the natural world, it's like we think that's where all the power is in America. Where's the aircraft carriers whenever we have a problem overseas? Okay? But as I saw saw above the view from above an aircraft carrier, okay, there's generally a captain, of course, but a lot of times it's an admiral because of a fleet. Now, I'm not, you know, well stooped on all the mechanics of the military, so you can, anybody that wants to can email me and, you know, help me correct this if I'm wrong. But, so let's take captain and admiral, okay? They're... The admiral over a fleet, <clears throat> captains over the ship. Well, these are big ships, guys. I went on the Midway in San Diego, big ship. I mean, what do they have? Like five, six thousand sailors. I mean, think of all the stuff it takes just to man that food and all the stuff. Okay, so all right, let's start with that. But everybody wants to be the Top Gun. An old movie. Tom Cruise was in it. Blew an, what, an F-14. Went in and killed all the bad guys. Blew up everybody. Did whatever, you know. Saved the day. Everybody wants to be. Kick the tires, light the fire. Good looking fighter pilot. Great, you know, just hero. Everybody wants to be the hero. Time to get rid of that Christian scorecard, guys. I'll get into that in a minute. Then I saw, I had heard a story one time, but I also saw it. There's so many different roles that people play on this, but one of them was that all the, all the, all the men and women would walk pretty much hand in hand across the deck from one end to the next, the light deck. Looking for screws, nuts, bolts, whatever. Because if any of those got sucked up into the turbines of the jets, it, it, it you know it caused failure. It crashed pretty much, blow up the engine. So that was one of the missions, okay? But then he took me down to the bottom of the ship, okay? A nuclear aircraft carrier has a ton of power, right? And the motor and the you know, all the technology that's in there and it's nuclear powered and it's just probably massive, honestly. Never seen one, but <clears throat> then that power is transferred, you know, into the shaft that goes to the propeller. Well, I grew up in Minnesota on the Mississippi and I saw some barge propellers. They're pretty big. I can't imagine an aircraft carrier how big the propeller is. It propels a ship like what? 30 some knots, 35 knots. It's about 40 miles an hour, somewhere around there. That's pretty fast for these big ships, guys, to be propelled across the ocean, a lot of power. But when he took me to the bottom of the ship, there was a handful of sailors. Could have been men and women. It's probably both, honestly. And they were propeller shaft went there was a seal that kept out the ocean water the sea out and the sailors had to you know it's probably more technical than that it's okay but I'm old school they had to grease it it was probably some high tech you know that shaft spinning lots of you know revolutions per minute I mean it's spinning pretty fast a lot of power that seal can't heat up. That propeller shaft can't heat up because it could 
bend warp stop the ship or the seal could leak I don't think the ship would sink but it would be very detrimental well this would be a big ship that they, they can't fail in the middle of the ocean especially if it was in a war zone it's a target it, it it just failure was not an option like that show on Apollo 13 or that saying so those guys are very important but when you think about it, there's a lot of depth in this because of the seal keeping out the sea while the seal keeps out or seal with the holy ghost those of us that are truly saved and his people that are called really want to be we've got to keep that seal keeps the sin out of our lives that power not transferred unless of everything's working so that's a semi part of it but where i'm going with all this is i don't care if you're the admiral or the grease monkey at the bottom of the ship the ground is always level at the foot of the cross we're all the same guys this is all hands on deck that's where i'm going with this this is another piece of this same message but I don't care if you live in the outhouse, under the outhouse, smell like the outhouse, a very nice house, billionaire that lives in a penthouse, or the White House. We're all the same, guys. We all, this is all hands on deck. Every role is important. Every soul <clears throat> is important. time to get over yourselves you know this isn't going to be popular with a lot of big preachers and big biz business people and people that think they're better than that's a that's a lie from the enemy deception we're all the same plenty of scriptures in there the one that everybody goes to john 3 16 for god so loved the, the world you know all the same, guys. Who did Jesus use a lot and go to a lot? Who anointed his feet with oil? A harlot. It's a, somebody that, you know, most people abuse and use and, and don't like. What did she do when she broke the alabaster box on his feet? There's so much in that message, too. At the depth of that, she wept. Man, guys, all hands on deck means this. And then the battle's real. Okay? It's very real. One of, I call them mantles, you can call them roles, missions, mandates different things whatever you but i call them mantles it's a mantle from the lord anointing from the lord whatever your position is in this battle for souls and it's real guys the world's kind of got if we're in a tail we, we've pretty much tail spun and crashed and burned already in this country i'll just be honest with you it's not about America anymore. It's about his people. That's another thing we need to get over ourselves. And this Christian scorecard, everybody wants to be, I got a million, saved a million souls. I got 10,000 commitment cards. I did this, I did that. I, you know, that should be your first sign. Raise a little bit of a spiritual eyebrow. There's something wrong because it's my, my, my ministry, my church, my this, my that. One of my messages is pray, plan, purpose, and provision. We got it kind of, you know what, backwards. Starts with an A, okay? Sorry. The cart before the horse. Everybody wants provision first, especially in America. 
It's all about money. Well, I could do all this stuff if I just have a million dollars. There's a reason why most of us aren't million, not millionaires, guys. It's because it's going to destroy your soul. Most people can't handle it. But the provision is always there. God is, and I'm not saying it's not okay to be you have nice things and all that. That's not what I'm saying, guys. Don't take this wrong. But we've put the money first as an idol. And this battle is real. And we put down people, discounted people. Joel's army, that's why it's going to come forth. It's not going to be your name in bright, shiny lights. A lot of this new worship stuff, music, you know, remind me of a rock concert, God, no different. And when I was on high on drugs and LSD and going to see Leonard Skinner and The Who, before I got saved at, at 19, Because the battle's real and the deception's real from the enemy. And we better get on the, uh, take our positions and take them seriously. I'm going to end with this. These are the scriptures that the Lord gave me because I always get scriptures. And I'm like, I didn't have a scripture for this message. It's James 2, 17. But the end of it is, body is dead without the spirit so is faith without works everybody's like oh you can't work your way you're right you can't work your way into heaven it's not about what you do it's about obedience but go back to the garden of eden guys adam and eve what did god want them to do just be his friend and be available and be there What's your position in your role? What is God telling you to do? Do it. Get up and do it. Get up off your laurels and your fancy churches. And get off the pews and get out into the world where the, where the real battle is, guys. You're on your knee. What is he telling you to do? We're all, that's another one of my messages, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world and the world. Look what happened during all this pandemic garbage. Non-essential. Dim diminishing people. You know, we think, you know, we're the greatest military in the land. Well, you know, man, where did collateral damage come from? They desensitize people. Collateral damage, what are you talking about? Guys, okay, everybody wants, like I said, everybody wants to be that top gun. They want to save the day. They want to blow up the bad guys and, you know, be the hero. Everybody loves the David and Goliath story. but Nobody wants to see the David that was the jerk. They had to repent, come clean before the Lord. Look at all the battles some of those people had to fight and us too we're walking epistles right now in a very sinful tainted world and the souls are real they're losing their lives to eternity i'm going to end with this because it goes along with this message there's way more to it than this but we're watching a show and I can't remember the name of the ship, but it was a ship that the mission was they were carrying the nuclear bomb to Tinian Island. And it was so secretive that normally it was a battleship and normally it would take and, you know, give it an escort of destroyers because it was going through Japanese infested submarine waters where the enemy was. 
they didn't. It was so secretive. Well, nobody knew it was coming. Nobody knew what, nobody was supposed to know when it was leaving. Anything. Well, on its way back, it got torpedoed and sunk. I think like 1,200 sailors survived but and landed in the water out of several thousand on the ship. Only like three or 400 made it because it was shark infested waters. So what's your role, guys, you know, in this? And you're on the battleship. Are you, are you going to be on a sinking ship? Which is where the world is right now. They're not slowly losing, losing their souls. Or, man, it's massive, guys. The battle is very real. Okay? If you look at a lot of my messages, they encourage people. But a lot of them, because one of my mantles is a watchman. Okay, I don't like it, guys, at all. I have argued with God, told him to pick somebody else. I just recently came through a massive year long experience with the Lord of chastisement because of pride in my life. Because I, I wrote two books, but one of them was, I've had thousands of visions, guys, literally. And I told the Lord, stop, pick somebody else, and I didn't want to do it. But when you're a watchman, you become a part. It doesn't make me any more, my role any more important. It doesn't diminish it either. Let's get that straight. You have to be where the Lord wants you to be. That comes with prayer, listening to Him. But when you're a watchman, man, you're a target for the enemy. Why? Because what do we do in, a, in a, what do we do in Desert Storm or any of the wars? First thing they did, what did they say? Went after the eyes and ears. Sent in Cobra gunships and took out all the radar and they put bugs in the computers to make them think there was sh planes over here when they were over there. And they, you know, they just they went after the people that are seen and in the know and could tell the other people in the battle where to go. It's been pretty brutal, guys, okay? My sword, uh, I didn't think I had pride in my life because of all the stuff the Lord has done for me and so many, many things. And I was like, man, he's showing me these things, done so many things in my life. He moved in so many different massive spiritual ways. Testimony is pretty awesome of what he's done for me. I didn't think I had pride in my life. My conscience was seared, guys. And that is a lot deeper than this, but a while back, I was watching the Discovery Channel. It was, you know, it was sad, but around the news, after forest fires, somewhere in California, and people would just go to their houses or what was left of them. They were just devastated. They lost everything. And they'd find a burnt picture or some part of a family heirloom. The tears were real. The hurt was real. The pain was real. Well, that was where I was at, guys, for over a year, this last year. Just looking around at the just the total destruction in my life pride that I didn't think I had. It's time to get rid of the sin and get in the battle. But because of where the Lord had placed me on my mantle, I was a target. And the deception from the enemy, that little sin grew up into a big sin, blew up into a big sin, seemingly little sin. No sin is little. It was a trap to destroy me. And I was wiped out, guys. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. You name it, the loss was 
so intense. Okay, guys, I'll just give you a brief example. Okay, I'm diabetic, and I kept getting a hole in my toe because there's a callus down there, and it would go all the way to the bone. Laying in the hospital a year ago, two a year and um, a year and a half ago, then doctor walks in and the surgeons walk in and my toe was really badly infected and they had already cut off a little bit of my other toe on the other side. And they're oh we're gonna cut we're gonna cut off all your toes, the whole front of your foot. You're gonna be in the hospital for four months. And the surgeon said, You'll be able to walk but not run. I'm like not what the Bible tells me. I'm going to be, be able to run and not be weary. And I said, get rid of the infection first. They kicked me out of the hospital. I had a huge hospital there in Dallas. I'm not going to name the name. I'm on antibiotics. I get back to my, my room and I change it to pills. See ya. Well, they covered their behind real well. I had to go to, I'm not anti-doctor, I still had to go to a different doctor, specialist, antibiotics, bottle, three times a day, went straight to my heart, man, it was very brutal, four months, guys, I've had some brain strokes again, and four years ago, I had them, I couldn't even walk, right now, I'm facing three major things, that are all life-threatening. Very serious, but it's got me so close to him because I've had to learn to just be dependent upon him a hundred percent, not partially, even even to function for the day. I'm not looking for empathy, sympathy. I'm not looking for anything, guys. I mean, because God's been providing for me. What I, you know, so the encouragement part of it is, man, you can, that scripture, I can do all things. Christ has strengthened me. You can't do anything without Christ that strengthens you, basically. But you can do all things with Christ who strengthens you. This is one area. Like I said, man, my sword was dull. So... Up and running again. A lot of things have gotten put into place again. <clears throat> it was just, man, it was a really fiery trial, guys. But it was, the Lord let me go through it, took me through it, carried me through it, walked with me through it, all of the above. To get the sin out of my life that I didn't think was there. The battle is real, guys. It's very intense. What's your role? Let's do it. Love you guys. Um, there's so much more I could say, but right now, one of the things that the Lord has me doing, and if you want to be part of it, come down to Dallas, or if you're in Dallas, just you know, email me at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. I'm putting together what I'm going to call blessing bags. But basically, it's backpacks for the homeless. But a little way deeper than that. But just connect. Come down. Call me. Email me. Whatever. I'm not asking for anything. Monetarily, guys, look at my messages. I've never asked for, don't even ask for an offering. For five years, I haven't. Keep your checkbook. Just come down and have a cup of coffee. But it's about connecting the body of Christ. It's one of my roles. Mantles. We've been like this headless horseman, like Ichabod Crane, running around, prophesying. Man, guys, get in the saddle and get in the battle. Love you guys. Um, I got to go because this message is getting way too long. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.